So welcome everyone to today's level two Chimera Fit class. Today's gonna be a full body workout. A little extra attention on balance and coordination. I've got a few fun coordination cerebellum type drills and other things that we'll do that also help with um, understanding where we're at in space and also can, believe it or not, help reduce some tension in the neck, which was a, a request for today. So we'll also do some specific like mobility things uh, addressing neck as well, but it'll be interesting to see how some of our little neuro tricks work for that. Um, so for class today, you'll see I have a foam roller, like a long, tall foam roller. I've got this nearby. And basically the main thing we're using it for today is with some of the, a few balance things, you may want to have it for balance to hold on to. Um, if you do not have a tall foam roller, don't worry. You could use, I'll easily use a chair or the wall for your fingertips, something like that when that comes up. Um, we'll also use some free weights, loop, loop band, long band, and a Pilates ball, which mine is over here for some reason. A little nine inch Pilates ball or a pillow works for that as well. Um, so once you've got those things, you'll have everything that you need for for today. And we're just going to start right where you're at and sitting. Option to prop yourself up if you want to be up on a pillow or a chair or anything that makes it comfortable to be sitting. We're going to pause for a second. We had a request for neck, addressing neck issues. So for, before we even get moving, go ahead and just check in and see like how does your neck feel. Just turn to the right, turn to the left. Just get a sense of how that feels. And then we're going to do a little skin stimulation. So let's start on whichever side you want to start on. You're going to take your hand and just give your skin a little rub. Nice and light, but quick. Stimulation over the entire neck. So all the way up, like we're, think of where your upper trap is, where it attaches back on the base of the skull, down by the back of the shoulder blade, up at the top of the shoulder, maybe even a little bit in the front by the collarbones. You're not, you're not trying to like massage too intensely. We're just giving everything a nice little skin stimulation so our brain has a little better input of what is going on here at the neck. If you even want to move your, if you have a strap, move the strap out of the way a little bit so you're actually on skin. This tends to work a little bit better. Get behind the ear a little bit. And then you can give that a little break. Pause for a second. Just check in with yourself. Just kind of notice how that side that you just did the skin stim, if it feels any different. And then maybe try just a little look over the shoulder, another little look over the shoulder, see how that feels. All right, and then I'm not gonna leave you hanging. We'll go ahead and if, I, like, I can definitely feel a difference, but we don't always, but just see how your nervous system responds. We'll go ahead and try that on the other side. So I'm very right-handed, so this is like super challenging to have my left hand do this. So already getting some coordination work happening there. If you want to, if you're like, wow, this is hard to do with your non-dominant hand, go ahead and use your dominant, whatever it works. You can move, yeah, move the strap out of the way. We're just lightly stimulating all those receptors in the skin. Get behind the ear, like right up there between that angle between your jaw and your base of your skull. It's where your first vertebrae, C1 lives. So we want to get all the way up there, all the way down by the front of the collarbone, down to the back. And then to pause, take a little moment, and then a little, just before we even move, check in again, see how that feels. It's super interesting. Try a little turn. Oh. It always like literally surprises me. I'm like, that is so much easier. Wow. Maybe it doesn't, but see, just check in, see how your body responds to that. And then once we come back to the center, we're going to pause for a second, close the eyes, check in with your breath. First, just noticing how your ribs are moving, how the abdomen is or is not moving, just seeing what your breath pattern is like. And then we're gonna move into a few rounds of triangle breathing. So we're gonna breathe in for you can pick your count. I'm going to go with threes, but you can go longer or shorter. So in for three, out for three, and then pause for three. In for three, letting the ribs expand all directions, out for three, 
and then pause. And go ahead, continue on your own for a few rounds. If you want to go slower than me, by all means, pick a number that's right for you. So we're emphasizing that pause at the end, which kind of helps us really get that nice relaxation of the ribs down toward the pelvis. Ideally breathing in and out of your nose. Obviously if you're very congested and you can't, you can do through the mouth. Tongue posture up with the roof of the mouth. Let's do about two more. and then we'll flutter the eyes open. Nice, then we'll go ahead, take right hand to left knee, just give your spine a gentle turn to look over your left shoulder. You can continue that triangle breath if that felt good, or just return to your typical breathing pattern here. We just wanna make sure we're breathing and then turn to the other side. Sitting forward onto your sit bones so that you're not leaning backwards as you rotate. Giving as much rotation of the neck that is comfortable. We'll unwind and then one more time, right hand, left knee. Think about letting your spine become really tall. Crown of the head reaching up and tailbone anchoring down. And then unwind left hand to right knee. Not forcing it, just getting into a little bit of a rotated position, allowing your Diaphragm to move in this bit of rotation. Nice, and then we'll come back to the center. We're gonna to turn to a hands and knees position. Make sure you have a little bit of room. And then with the hands under the shoulders, gonna, especially since we're just sitting for a minute, let's give the hips a little bit of a circle. So you're gonna lean the hips to the left, sit back toward your left foot, and then scoop the hips over toward the right foot and up and over to the center. So it's gonna be a, hips to the left, down, around and then back up. Just getting a little bit of circulation into the hip joints, moving all that synovial fluid. Ribs stacked over pelvis, so we have a pretty neutral spine and most of the movement happening in the hips. And once you come back up to the center, weight even on both hands and we'll shift and go the other way. Right hip, lean toward the right foot, circle around. And you're going slow enough that you can notice that you're placing your hips in a deliberate position instead of just kind of flopping yourself around. If you need to modify and have hands on fists or use push-up stands, totally okay. Whatever we need to do. And then on our last one, we'll come back up to the center, toes together, knees apart, and resting in a child's pose. Let the ribs expand out toward the legs. Belly softens down toward the floor on the inhale. Tailbones widen, or sit bones rather, on your inhale. Nice, now on your next breath we'll come up to a hands and knees position, turn your toes under, push the floor away and lift the hips up to a down dog. We're gonna pedal one heel down at a time. Nice. Shoulder blades can come up toward the ears just a little bit so we have nice strong upper traps. Holding yourself onto the mat. We're gonna shift the weight into the left foot, float the right leg up, three leg dog. We'll bend the top knee and small little spiral to look under the right arm. We'll reach that right leg up 
and then step it through into a lunge. So right foot in front, left foot in back. Option to drop your back knee. We're going to rotate it, spot, lunge right arm up to the sky, standing strong into both feet. Option to drop your back knee, and then hand behind the head, world's greatest stretch. You're gonna round and rotate right elbow down toward the left elbow. <laughs> inhale to come back up. Standing strong into the feet, inhale. As you come up, exhale, rotating down. Inhale, coming back up. Nice, two more. Exhale, looking down. This looks great. Inhale, up we go. And one more time. Exhale. And then once we come up, we can reach up to the sky one more time. Bring your right hand behind your back, so you're like you're reaching toward the floor with your right hand. Not like a super passive stretch, just kind of give your shoulder a little reach in that direction. And then unwind, bring it all the way back overhead. We're gonna do that just one more time, just giving your shoulder a circle. Palm comes down, reach back a little bit, and then reach back up. Nice. We're going to frame your foot, step back to a plank. From here, either hips up to a down dog or vinyasa, chaturanga, chest lowers down. Inhale, gentle cobra or up dog. Exhale, down dog. And switch sides. So weight to the right foot, left leg floats up. You can bend the knee, slowly spiral, look under the left arm just a bit. Standing strong into that right foot, Maybe you can check out what your arch is doing if you have a foot that tends to flatten down. See if you can get a little muscle support in the arch of your foot. If your heel doesn't touch, that's also okay. Then we'll unwind and step that left foot through. Right hand anchors down. You can option to drop the back right knee. Left arm comes up, twisted lunge. Perfect. We'll go hand behind the head. And then exhale, left elbow drops down to the right. And then inhale, up we go. Nice. Exhale. Come back down. And inhale. So come up. Nice. Take your time. Like the air is thick. Keeping your spine as long as possible. One more time. And on the last one, we'll add a little shoulder reach. So left arm will reach up. We'll take that left hand, slowly bring it behind your back like you're reaching toward the floor, but you're holding it there, not just like flopping it down. And then reach it back up and give your whole arm a little stretch overhead. Same deal, it's not flopping, you're actively placing it there. And then one more time, rotate down, hand reaches behind you just a little bit while still standing strong into the ground. Nice, up and over we go. We're gonna frame your foot, step back to a plank. Either again, meet in down dog or vinyasa chest, lowers down slow. Inhale, back muscles lift you up in your back bend, and then exhale, back up to down dog. Heart melts forwards, but not so much that there's any pinchy weirdness in the shoulder. And then next breath, we'll walk feet forward to forward fold. Maybe give the toes a little wiggle, make sure all of them are supported on the ground to lift yourself up. Inhale, with a little bit of a back bend, heart reaches up toward the sky. And exhale, bringing hands to prayer. Perfect job. Then while we're here, we're gonna stand for a moment just with the feet together, palms forward, shoulders anchored onto your back. Just checking in with your standing position. Look straight ahead, memorize your spot. See if we can get a nice alignment, noticing the weight of the feet. Maybe shift the weight forward into the toes, lean the weight back into the heels. Do that two or three more times and see if you can land in a space that's pretty evenly distributed between front of foot and back of foot. Soften the knees, neutral pelvis, ribs stacked over everything else. Lengthen the crown of the head up toward the sky. Memorize that position, and then we're gonna take the vision out if you feel safe to do so. Close your eyes. And then with eyes closed, see if we can shift the weight to the front of the feet just a little bit. Come back to the center. Really working on our vestibular system. And then shift the weight slightly. It'll be nearly, it'll be like half the distance. Back to the heel. Back to the center. Pause. Recheck the pressure so even on both feet. And then try one more time, just shifting the weight slightly toward the front. You'll notice the back half of the body, back chain of the body kind of firing up there. Bring it back to center. And then a little lean into the heels, but toes still stay glued to the ground. Nice, we're gonna come back to the center, 
Flutter the eyes open, give the toes a wiggle, give your shoulders a couple of e easy circles. Let's take any tension out from the shoulders. And then we're gonna bring your feet just about hip width apart. Knees soft bend, just doing an easy body weight squat. So five times we're just going to sit down into your imaginary chair and then back up. Nice and simple one, it's like less than your full range too, just kind of getting hips, knees warmed up. Three hands in a comfortable spot. Four, nothing too fancy. That's five, perfect job. We're gonna inhale, reach up. Exhale, hands to prayer. Those looked beautiful. And then we're gonna step forward, uh, back with your left foot forward, right foot in front, split squat. Same thing, five like mini baby warm up ones, all 10 toes forward. You're imagining like we're sitting into a baby chair, we're gonna come down and up five little squats here. Two. Good. Maybe a little bit of a trunk lean forward. Three. Nice. That's five. And then step up, switch sides, left foot in front, right foot in back, all ten toes forward. You'll notice if you lean your trunk forward, it helps you get a little more glute work. Down for one. Two. Nice. Three. Four. That's five, nice. And then we'll step up. Inhale, reach up. A Little bit of a back bend. Exhale, hands to prayer. I'm gonna face you guys. Drop your right hand toward the right knee. We'll do an easy side bend, just reaching up and over. Spine as long as humanly possible. Left hand down, right arm up. Then you lift the knee caps up toward the thighs, or toward, the, yeah, toward the thighs, I guess. Toward the hips is what I meant to say. That makes sense too, they both make sense. Back to the center, and then we're gonna get ready to do split squat with a little bit of weight, or just body weight, if you like. So whichever felt good for you, if you wanna add weights to it, we're gonna hold them either right by your side or one weight in front of your chest. Right leg in front, left leg in back, perfect. And I'm gonna do 10, if that feels like too many for you, you just pick what's the right amount for you. I'll 10 toes forward. And then here we go, going down and up. One, nice. Two, depth should be comfortable. Three, exhale on the way up. Anchor the, rib, the shoulder blades on the ribs. Four, nice. Knee forward over that second toe. Five. Six. Seven. Eight, hips back so you're sitting back into that front leg. Nine. And that's 10. Perfect. You can step up or step back, switch legs, however you'd like to. If your wrists need a break, if your hand weights feel heavy for you, you can rest them down for a moment. Otherwise, you guys are looking good. Here we go. And down. One. Rib stacked. Two. These look really good. Three. It's like a little slower on the way down than the way up. Four, five, six. Such good work. Stabilizing muscles of the hip here and the knee. Eight, nine, and one more makes a 10. You got it. Awesome job. Let the weights down. I'm gonna give your hands, wrists a little bit of a break and circle the wrist around. We're gonna make it a figure eight. So index finger goes down and around, palms up. Index finger down, it comes up. Kind of like a conductor, there we go. Little bit of fun proprioceptive work. Slight different movement than perhaps we're used to. And then reverse that, so instead of index finger down, palms down, try pinky finger up. Let your pinky finger be the first thing that comes up and around and scoop in a circle leading with your pinky finger. Yeah, slow and controlled. Letting each joint in the wrist get a little bit of action here. About two more, not too fast. Lots of good proprioceptive mapping. With this this little gentle movement. And then we're going to rest the wrist, give everything a little, little shake. 
We're gonna reach up overhead, we're gonna get ready to overhead press next, but just to warm up our shoulders, make sure we're ready for that, we're gonna go just air press, hands to shoulders, maybe soft bend in the knees. We're gonna reach up to the sky, both arms, and back down. Five times. Two, let's check in, see how shoulders feel, reaching up, palms facing your head, three. Think about starting the movement with your feet, four. And then on your last one, we're gonna just pause with the arms up overhead and try a baby shoulder shrug. Up, five times, and down. Ribs connect to pelvis, two, so we're not ugh, sagging here. Nice. Three, if anything pinchy, keep it smaller so it's not pinchy. Don't force. You never wanna stretch into a pinch. And five, and then down we go. We'll let the arms down. Just give your body a gentle twist. We'll get ready to overhead press, add a little weight to that. All right, and then when you're ready, we'll grab our weights, overhead press. So we've got feet right under the hips, palms facing you. Again, I'm gonna do 10 if you wanted to stick with five, two, however many reps feels right to you. I just know with this amount of weight, that's the right for, amount for me. And we're gonna reach up for one. Except two on the hard part. Three, weight even. Both feet, both arms move together as best as we can. Nice, five, little micro bend of the knees, six. If you need to do a little press, seven, that's allowed. Eight, head centered over your body, nine, and 10. Nice job, let the weights down. Take a second, amazing. We're gonna grab some water if you need it. Give yourself just a moment here. We're gonna do repeat. Our lunge, overhead press one more time. So take a second while we're here, give your ankles this time three small circles each direction. Very slow, like if you need to hold on. And the other way without skipping any part of your circle and then try the same on the other foot. It's like a totally different thing. Like when you're like, oh yeah, I know how to ankle circle. And then you like slow it way down. Takes a lot more control, a lot more work in your proprioceptive system to like actually pay attention to every little part of that. One more time, the other. especially if you've ever had an ankle sprain, an ankle injury. That foot turned in position can feel a little unfamiliar, weird at first. All right, just be careful with it so don't force it, but it gets better if you practice it. Okay, cool. Then we got our split squat. Yet again, if any toe issues, by the way, welcome to regular squat instead of split squat. Also allowed. I've got my right leg in front. Okay, we're all on the right side. That sounds good to me. And then once we're ready, all 10 toes forward, ribs stacked over pelvis, anchored shoulders anchored on your back. We got it, we're gonna lower down. And up. One. Two hips come down without crashing your knee. Three, you got it. Inhale and then exhale for full exhale. Sometimes we hold our breath and get stuck there. That's why it's important to exhale. Six, you get your deep core muscles active. At the end of the exhale, kind of naturally. Seven, looking good. Eight, do the number of reps that's right for you. Nine, I feel like I'm gonna go for 10, but you do you. Do you. Nice. And then we'll try the other side. Left leg in front, all 10 toes forward. Hinge forward a bit so you can feel those glutes kicking in. Love it. Down and up for one. Shoulders anchored down. Two, nice and controlled. Shoulders level. Three, you guys got it. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Almost there. Eight. Nine. Metabolically, 10. Squats are so super good. So efficient, lots of muscles all happening at the same time. Give your fingers, this time an individual finger circle. Like index finger only, like two or three clockwise, two or three counterclockwise index finger. 
Then middle finger, circle. Sometimes you can get real fancy. Instead of circle, you try figure eight with your finger. Try, I don't know, I'm feeling circle today, but if you're like, that's easy. I wanna figure eight, like, go for that. But the trick is seeing if you can do it just one, ooh, that's tricky. The ring finger especially, and pinky. Little baby pinky circle, and baby pinky circle. And then last but not least, thumb. And thumb. Perfect, okay, those are fun to throw in in between. And then we got overhead press next. The feet under the hips, palms facing you. Little bend of the knees, inhale to begin, exhale. Jump one, two, three, four, five, ribs connected to pelvis, six, weight even on both feet, seven, these look amazing, eight, nine, ten, perfect, all right. We're gonna set the weights down. Take a second. Now we're gonna have foam roller moment in a second. So you wanna grab that, or if you don't have foam roller, a chair, something that you can reach with your fingertips about that far away. So either with your, let's see, we got, yeah, everyone's got foam rollers. Perfect, they're so fun. They, there's so many things, so many useful things we can do with this. All right, so we're gonna have our foam roller. Actually, I'm gonna do left leg first. I'm so right leg, so right legged. All right, so we're gonna have your foam roller in front of you for your two hands at a comfortable distance. We're gonna have it at a distance where it's like comfortable, but like you have to reach for it a little bit. So we're gonna go into a warrior three position. So you wanna have a little space so that as you come down, there you go. So it's like you're gonna have the toes forward, reach forward like you almost can't quite reach it. That's how far away we wanna be. Ribs connected to pelvis, and then float up the back leg a couple of inches. So it's like you're reaching ahead toward that foam roller hold a, or a chair, a little bit of downward pressure into it with your arms. It's hard to look at the screen while I'm doing this. All right, then pause. Maybe as you get familiar with now what we're doing, you can come forward a little lower with your chest, reach yourself as long as you possibly can, and then come back up out of that. Now remember what that felt like then whichever, if everyone did left leg, we'll repeat it a second time. Take your left hand, do one little cerebellum drill. Just check in and see how this works. We're gonna take your left hand, and we're gonna do a flip of the left hand up and down, up and down. You're gonna use your right hand underneath you as like a, just a check, just to know, did I tap? So you're gonna tap the back of your hand, tap the front of your hand, so it's just gonna be tap, tap, tap. All with the top hand, about 10 times as quickly as you can. And with coordination and being as accurate. So accuracy, balance, coordination, ABCs, or cerebellum. So about 10 times as quickly as you possibly can. Pause, rest for a moment, and then try it one more time just as an alternate variation of that. Instead of down here, we're gonna do this up here with the palm up, palm forward, like with your arm up at a comfortable angle. Palm forward and back 10 times as quickly as you can. This is the princess wave. Two, three, four. It could be slower, it could be faster, depending on how quick your accurate speed is. And then come back to your left leg again, now that we just did a little bit of extra fine tuning to your cerebellum. Try left leg one more time. Find about the same distance as we just were. Reach forward. I'm gonna float that back, right leg up, into your warrior three. Keep your big toe glued to the ground. Maybe check in, see if this feels any different. It may, it may not giving your nervous system slightly different input. See what kind of output we get. One more breath as you make yourself as long as possible, and then we'll let that foot down. Nice job. All right, good, and then we're gonna bring that over to the other side. So right leg in front, make a little adjust, or just change your legs. I'm flipping around so it's easier for me to see you. So first thing we'll do, just check in with this position. We'll do our little cerebellar drill and see what happens. So we're shifting right to the front. Square the hips so like all that, that bone in the front of your hip is facing forwards. Chest nice and long. We're gonna float that back leg up a bit. There you go. No need to go too high. Yeah, nice. We don't need to have a big arched back situation. 
ribs connected to pelvis, head in line with everything else, maybe a little bit of work with your arms to hold into the foam roller. Take a breath, kind of memorize, see how that feels, see how wiggly your foot feels, your calf. Notice how that feels right now, come out of it, and then we'll try that same drill two ways, first on the hand, the butt with the right hand. So quick as you can. Accurate though, not quick and sloppy. You want it to only go as quick as you can accurately. Good. And then 10 princess waves, like hello to my adoring fans. About 10. If you're kind of a high volume person, like you just need lots of stuff, feel free to do more reps. Maybe your brain needs more repetition. But about 10 is a good place to check in. And then we'll come back one more time, wait on the right foot, reach forward and float the left leg up. Make yourself really long, little bit of activity of arms into that foam roller. Wow, that does, it really does feel a bit easier. For me, at least. Five, four, three ribs connected to pelvis, big toe glued down, to one, and then up we go, perfect. Very nice. All right, good job. So then we're gonna bring the foam roller. We're gonna go now one other variation on this. So left leg, this time a, um, a warrior one position. So left knee is forward, right heel is back. So first we're facing the foam roller straight ahead. So it's basically in line with your knee. Perfect. Stagger. Okay. Your stance, there we go. Then we're gonna open up warrior two. And then take your warrior two, and then you're gonna find, like make a little adjustment so it's here where you can find this. And we're gonna add a lateral glide to your rib cage. So feet glued together, you're gonna reach straight out to the side as far as you comfortably can. Anchor your feet to the ground, and then come back. But we're gonna keep your pelvis, imagine like someone's holding, like I literally could come into your room and hold your pelvis still. So we're gonna lean, so it's just a glide of your rib cage, pause, hold that, and then glide back. Nice, so we're getting this sideways move into the ribs. One more time, knee points forward over second toe. Feet are pulling towards each other, inner thighs are active. The slight little move, extra movement in the rib cage, come back to the center, and then try that on the other side. So we're gonna have foam roller in your spot, warrior one, as a little check-in, back heel down, knee forward, warrior two, open up to the side. There's a hint of like tilt of the tailbone down if we need to, if you're kind of a back archy person like me. So there you go. The hinge, so not really a hinge, it's more like a, it's a shift. So shift, yeah, there it is. Pelvis stays here and then we're gonna shift rib cage a little bit to the right. And then come back. Heels pull together, reach to the right, getting a little bit of side glide in the rib cage. Bit of a kind of new, unfamiliar movement, unless you're a dancer. One more time, reach, pause, and then back to center. Beautiful. We're gonna come out on out of that. You can leave your foam roller off to the side. Bring her away. Give yourself a nice, easy inhale, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Bend the knees a bit in your forward fold. So if we need to, back half of the body active. Roll up. Give the shoulders a couple of rolls. And then we're gonna grab your long band. A little bit of pulling movement. So now, with long band, it's gonna be a really simple pull. Palms up. If you've got, yeah, if you've got the originally got the can-do band, if you don't wanna hold through fingers, you can also, the nice thing about that, we can do your hands in the loops. And it's gonna be a straight pull, um, theraband, like a band pull. But we're gonna go at a few different angles. So we're gonna start from down here, palms up, shoulder blades come back as you do a little pull here, pause, little pull here, pause, little pull up. We're gonna, just like spokes on a wheel, up and up. 
As you get closer to your face, just go as close as you can without smushing your eyes and then back down, forehead, eyes and nose, chin, sternum, there you go. Right at the chest, lower ribs, tummy, and back, nice. Rest, and then second round, we're gonna do this and now at, at a diagonal. So we're starting at a bit, you know, start at about here, what is this, 45, Six, it's more like 60 degrees. So we're going to be an angle here, 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 all the way until we're close to a vertical angle, and then out. There you go. Actually, I started that weird, sorry. Bring the opposite arm with you. This makes more sense as we get going, sorry. I cued that strange. Up, and up, there you go. And your goal is to make as many of these little angles as you can. So like fine-tuning that shoulder blades, moving with every little bit of that. Let's try one more round. Up we go, weight even on both feet. Good, head centered on the body, little pull. pull. The blue band gets uh, pretty intense, quick, sooner than you would think. And back to the center. And once we land on the place where we started, we are done with that. You can let the band down, give your arms a little, little wiggle. And then we're gonna move into a row, last weight exercise for now. We're gonna move into a row, option to do this in a hands and knees position. So it's going to be a, a bird dog row. So if you want, would prefer to be standing, that's also an option. But if you're with me here, we're gonna do this, this version. So in hands and knees, I'm gonna start with my left arm. So what you're gonna do is take your right, either start, just stay right there, it's fine. A little more challenge would be to take your right leg opposite right leg straight behind you, push the floor away, stay there, or last option is to even float your back foot up a couple inches. So we've got the right leg, left arm is then gonna row, pulling the weight toward your hip. Shoulder blade leads the way to pull up into a row, pause, and then back down you go. Nice, lift up, pause, and down two. Let's just do five of these, three, four for the first time. Head neutral, five, it's like you're thinking of shoulder blade toward the opposite hip. And then roll the weight over to the other side and switch. You got it. So opposite leg and arm are doing just as much work to hold you steady as the rowing leg. Extend that back leg, float it up an inch or two if you can, and then shoulder blade lifts up for one, two, three. Looking good, four. That's five. Let it down, roll it over, take a moment. We're gonna sit back toward the heels. Make sure your weight is not in your way in a little child, so you can kind of scoot it. Just like a sit back toward the heels. <laughs> little mini child's pose without smashing your face into your weight. Nice, we're gonna come back up and then try that again. Now, if five felt definitely easy and you wanna do a few more, I'm gonna do 10 on the second round, but I just wanna give you the option to check in with that. So we're gonna wait back, ribs connected to pelvis, maybe float your leg up. Head in line, and then we'll lift up for one, two, three, four. Exhale through the lift, there you go. I go maybe lift your head a little bit more. Six, or split the difference. <laughs> Seven, there you go. Extend your knee straight, like someone's pulling your toe. Yeah, 10, good. And then other side, ribs connected. It's like if you can imagine a strap from the ceiling, pulling your waist up to the sky, float your leg up just a bit, extend the knee as straight as you can, and lift for one, two, three, nice, good. Rachel, if you bring the weight closer to your hip than your shoulder, right? so when you pull, bring the weight toward your hip rather than up toward your shoulder, if that makes sense. Let's see. Better. Good. And then rest. So Rachel, what if, um, if you think of the weight actually like literally touching your hip bone rather than, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause that, there you go. Try to give it over. Otherwise it ends up being a bicep curl. Yeah, you got it. Okay, we're resting from that. If you need to read, if you want to practice again, free to do it. Otherwise, we're gonna child pose. Otherwise, Remember for, we'll remember for next time. Walk your hands over to the right, add a little side bend to it. Yeah. 
you can walk your hands over to the left. We'll come back to the center and then swing yourself around. Find yourself uh, laying down position on your mat. So however you'd like to get there, hydrate, whatever you need. We're gonna have our Pilates ball handy and your loop, loopy loopy band. So I wanna have those close by once we're on the mat so you don't have to go hunting for it in a moment. We're gonna bring the ball between the knees Pause here for a moment, just kind of resettle into being on the mat. Ribs anchored down to the floor. Chin lifted from chest. Nice. And then we're gonna float the arms up, shoulder blades anchored down onto the mat. So reach your fingers up, but at the same time, shoulders anchored down and feel the weight of your ribs on the ground. We're gonna float the arms, both of them together, just overhead. See if you can reach your arms. How far can you reach them without your back arching off the mat? And then slowly bring the hands back up. Two more, just really simple check-in. Exhale, give the ball the tiniest little squeeze, a little lift of that transverse abdominus, your deep abs, pelvic floor, keeping the ribs heavy, the bigger abs kick in a little bit there to stabilize. Slowly bring the hands back up. Take a full inhale in between, rest, and then just one more time. On your exhale, a little squeeze of the ball, a little lift. The deep core muscles, the arm reach overhead. Doesn't have to be high. We just want to get to that point where it's like it's work to keep your ribs down. And then arms can rest down by your side. Perfect. We're going to then move into the 100. We'll bring the knees up over the hips. Either ball between knees or you could make it a little tougher. Ball between ankles. Take a breath in. Collarbones wide. On your exhale, we have a little bit of a crunch and pulse the arms down. One, two, three, four, five. Nice exhale. Two, three, four, five. Here's two, two, three, four, five. And exhale. Two, three, four, five. And three, two, three, four, five. Exhale. Two, three, four, five. And four, two, three, four, five. Nice. If your head needs a break, you can do a hand behind the head. Five. Or just let the head down. Exhale. Two, three, four, five. And six, two, three, four, five. Exhale. Two, three, four, five. This is seven, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five, and eight, two, three, four, five. Just stay with it as long as you can. And nine, don't have to force it. We're almost done. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Last one, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, and hold for a moment before you come back down and give your knees a little hug. Let, leave the ball off to the side. We give you our Low back, a nice little massage. You can extend the left leg along the mat. Right leg comes up, single leg circle. Option to modify, you can keep the bottom leg bent if you prefer that. It's gonna be drawing a circle with the top leg. Bottom ribs glued to the floor. Lower down and around. Keeping the circle at a size that feels right to you. So it can be a bigger, slower circle or slightly faster, smaller circle. Each time is an exhale as you come up. Collarbones stay wide, ribs heavy, and reverse the direction. And imagine we've got a marble right under your belly button. We're attempting to not let the pelvis move as your leg circles around. One more time. Hold at the last one, toes to nose. Give your heel a reach up to the sky as your hip anchors down, and then reach your leg across your body, a little extra nerve glide there. Pause there, turn your foot in a little bit, toes toward away from your body, and then come out of that. Give your knee, if that's too much, don't force that. Then give your knee a little hug, and we'll switch sides. So right, either foot or calf glued to the floor. Left leg up, anchor the whole rest of your body to the ground as we go down and around. Nice, it's a nice full ha, exhale, each time the leg comes up. In fact, if you're not worried about making some noise, if you can actually make that ha sound, it's a nice opportunity. Get some vagus nerve stimulation from that vibration in your throat. Two more, and on the last one, pause at 12 o'clock and reverse, right calf, Right hip, right rib, glued down. Two 
two more. And last one, we're gonna hold there, toes to nose, reach your heel up to the sky, hip anchors down. And if you want a little extra nerve gliding, we'll bring the knee across the chest. And then turn, invert the foot so the big toe turns in, like it's big toe reaching away from your body. Like, how do I explain this? But I'm upside down. And then back in we go, come out. Good, knee to chest. Beautiful, then we're gonna take loopy band. Bring it just above the knees. Feet about hip width apart. Just going into a simple bridge, weight even on both feet. Maybe give yourself robot arms so you can use your lats to help you a little bit. On the exhale, we're gonna articulated bridge. So tailbone tips up, heels are heavy. Roll yourself up one vertebrae at a time. Pause when you're at your maximum height. See if you can make your spine longer. Like if I could literally take your tailbone and pull it toward your knees with the help of your arms. And once you've got that really long position, little, you know, notice your glutes should be active doing something, whole back half of the body, then float the arms up. Pause. And then roll down without the arms unless you need them. And we'll roll down one vertebrae at a time. Slight outward pressure onto the band the whole time. Come back down. Option to use your arms to lift yourself back up, or if you'd rather keep your arms up for more challenge, that's there for you. You're gonna press on the exhale, press out against the band, rolling back up to your bridge. Chin lifted from chest at the top of the bridge. Stand strong into the right foot, and then lift your left heel or entire left knee. Pause here. Chin lifted, stand strong into the, your supporting leg. Lower that side down, shift the weight. Lift the right heel, good. Tailbone still reaching out really, really, really long, or entire right leg comes up. Pause and hold. Slow motion, lower the heel, lower the foot. Lower yourself down, one vertebrae at a time. You can rest the arms down, take a breath. I'll do that one more time. Inhale to begin. Press out slightly against the band, weight even on both feet, exhale. Up we go. Nice neutral pelvis, tailbone long, shift the weight, left heel comes up, option to lift the entire left knee. And last option, if we've got a little extra gas in your gas tank, we're gonna lift a little pulse of the knee toward your chest for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Otherwise, pause and hold at the level you're at. 10, we're gonna slowly let that, that side down, yep. And then shift the weight to the left. Lift the heel, pause and hold, or option to lift the knee with our little pulse for one, two, three, four, nice. Five, chin lifted, six, exhale. With each lift of the knee, 10. All right, awesome, down we go. Roll it down. We're going to get rid of the band, hug the knees into the chest. Give yourself a couple of rocks, massage your back to come up to sit. If one, option, leave it at one rack. And then we're gonna roll all the way down, starting either with your knees bent or go ahead to the more advanced version with the legs straight and around the spine. And then take one little vertebrae at a time to roll down. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, roll up. Now on the way up, we can use a leg, hand behind the knee, to help lift yourself up. And then as you reach forward, it's a forward reach, not down. It's more like just trying to lengthen the spine. Inhale, up we go. Exhale, if we need a little help. From, yeah, at any point, you can use hands behind the knee to lower yourself with control. Same thing on the way up. Go at a pace. That feels right to you. There's no, absolutely no reason to try to do this super fast. In fact, I challenge you to do it a little slower than you think you need to. About letting both shoulders come up at the same time. Imagining your spine becoming longer as you roll down, it's like your head is gonna land farther away from your tailbone than when we started. Let's try one more. And then we'll finish. 
back down on the mat. Pause here for a moment. And on the, your exhale, we're gonna come back up to sitting. And however, either if you wanna roll up one more time or if you just want to lift yourself up to sit in whichever way you'd like to, and then we'll move into the saw. So we're gonna have feet about hip width apart. Option to bend the knees a little bit if the hamstrings feel a bit tight, because we wanna have a nice, as much vertical position of your trunk as possible. Arms to the side, anchor your heels. And we're gonna rotate to the left, just an easy twist. And then reach across your body, right pinky finger to pinky toe. One, two, three little easy stretches, and then up we go. Anchor the left hip down, reach across to the right pinky toe. One, two, maybe look back at that back hand. Three, back up to the side. And then up and over. One. You can play with what feels good foot position wise. Either let them just kind of be neutral and then to the other side. You can point them. Three, and back to center. I like to like challenge myself and flex them because I'm such a like point person. If you're a dancer, gymnast person, you're like your brain is like, I should point my toes all the time. So I like to sometimes purposely flex them. So it makes my brain confused in a good way. Two, three. So it's more of a reach than a bounce. And then one more time. One. Really good fascia situation happening here. Getting a nice movement of the entire back chain of the body. Move our spiral lens back to center. Perfect. And then we'll come back to the center. Sit up nice and tall. Give your legs a little shake. Maybe give them a little wiggle side to side. We'll bring the feet together into a butterfly position. There we go. Pause there. Hint of a lean forward with a reach with your chest to the right. Without forcing it, center, just kind of see what your hip mobility groin is feeling like today, and then a little bit to the left. So it's like a tiny little reach and scoop without forcing it. So it's, and I'm not pulling with my arms, my hands are just kind of resting here. Like your trunk is in charge of that whole movement. One more time. Oh, I haven't done that one for a while, I can tell. <laughs> And I can tell. Nice, and we'll come back to the center. Make sure you've got plenty of room back behind you. We're gonna roll down one vertebrae at a time. Bend your left knee. We'll do a little spine twist. Right hand toward left knee. Right, left foot can either rest on the floor or hook behind your knee. Gentle spine rotation, looking over at that left hand. The top left leg is going to have a little bit of energy upward into your hand. So it's not totally passive. We'll unwind and then switch. Left knee down, right knee comes up and it's a little easy spike twist. can hook around the knee, it can be on the floor, right knee, a little bit of energy up toward the sky. We'll come back to the center and then allow the legs to soften down to the mat or any comfortable position for Shavasana. Palms to the sky. If you need any extra pillows, blankets, whatever you need to be comfortable. We'll close the eyes. We'll go through a little guided relaxation. So on your next breath, we're gonna tense the muscles of the feet, calves, thighs, glutes, give everything a big squeeze, 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 squeeze. And then let it all go. And then on your next breath, we'll squeeze the hands, forearms, upper arms, shoulders, give everything a really big, one last hurrah to squeeze, 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 squeeze any tension out of the upper body, and then let it rest.
And then last, we'll tense the muscles of the face. Pucker the lips, squeeze the eyes, squeeze, 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 squeeze. And then let it go. I'm going to let each exhale be an opportunity to let go of any tension that's still hanging on. Softening the shoulders and the back. It's like you're allowing your skeleton to be as heavy as possible onto the floor. Softening the eyes. Relaxing the jaw. Shoulder blades become heavy. Allowing the sits bones to widen with each inhale. As well as the low back and the abdomen. So we get a full filling up of the center of your body like a balloon. And a full exhale letting all the air out. Technically, it's not all the air, but as much as you can. Allowing your hands to be heavy. Noticing the weight of the calves and the heels. And then on your next breath, we'll start to notice the room with sounds and smells. Bring a little bit of movement into the fingers and toes, but while maintaining that nice relaxation through the rest of the body. When you're ready, we'll turn to your side and keep the eyes closed if you like. Just recalibrate to this position. Stay there as long as you like, or when you're ready, you can bring yourself back up to sit. Wake yourself back up with a Nice reach to the sky, inhale. Exhale, we'll bring your hands to prayer. Close the eyes, giving yourself a moment of gratitude for all that beautiful work you were able to do today. Namaste. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining me. So